Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Merry Christmas to all of you. Oh, I th you know, I love it. You're all talking back. <laughs> and I see some of my students all over the place. I love it. Welcome to all of you. Thank you for being here. Um, a couple of announcements for you. Uh, clearly, uh, um, um, this year, not only are we dealing with COVID-19, but uh, we have the, 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 the rain going on today. So I'm, I'm most excited that you, you came out regardless. So thank you for being here. Um, please, um, our music can be found online on our website at www.sinclairsi.com. So don't turn off your phone, but rather put it on silence and use it to go on our website and pray and sing with us. All the readings are there for you, so um, you can do that. Um, thank you for being here and for keeping each other safe. I'm so happy looking at all of you. Everyone has their mask on, and, and the, ma the mask is covering both your nose and your mouth. So thank you for that. Um, please keep that on um, during our time together. When it is time for communion, we ask everybody to practice social distancing and make sure you are not too close to people who are not um, from your same household. Just two announcements. Um, the mass schedule for the Solemnity of Mary, Mother of God, which is New Year's Day, can be found on our website. Again, www.sinclairsi.com. Um, with this terrible year we, we've had, I think it's, 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 it goes without saying that we need to begin the new year with God and asking for his uh, guidance. So join us for Mass as you can. As you're leaving the church, we encourage you to take a little baby Jesus figurine. Our new pastor, Father Arthur Mastrolia, brought this beautiful idea the, uh, of um, Rosca de Reyes um, tradition here at St. Clair's. And what we're asking you to do is take the baby Jesus, go home, and bake. <laughs> bake cake or, or um, whatever, or bread, whatever you want to bake and put the baby Jesus in it. It can be baked uh, um, in the batter, with the batter. And whomever gets the slice that has the infant Jesus is the winner. Just make sure you let us know who the winner is so that on January 10th, 10th we'll be able to give them a gift for having gotten the baby Jesus. So why don't you start that tradition with us? Make it fun. It's something you can do at home. Uh, again, thank you for being here. A Merry Christmas to you, and if I don't see you next week, a happy and blessed New Year to all of you. Have a great celebration. Please stand and say hello to everybody. And we begin with, O oh, come all ye faithful.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. My dear people of God, we have to rejoice because the infant king is amongst us. We have to rejoice because God is coming to save his people. He is bringing us joy. He is bringing us peace. And so, therefore, if he's gathered here this evening, all that we are asking the Lord to do for us is that we can open our hearts to him so that this visitor, this important visitor, can come and stay in our hearts. Before we listen to the readings, let us pause for a while and ask the Father to forgive us our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I've greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I've done, what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most gracious fault. Therefore, I ask blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth with people of free will. We bless you, we bless you, we love you, we glorify you. We bring your sins to your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year, as we wait in hope for our redemption, grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also marry to face him conf confidently when he comes again in our joy. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet. Until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held up by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you should be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Why? 
my chosen one, I have sworn to David, my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. joyful shout in the light of your countenance so lord they walk at your name they rejoice all the day and through your justice they are exalted forever i will sing the goodness of the lord he shall say to me my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior, forever I will maintain my kindness toward Him, and my covenant with Him stand firm. Forever I will sing the goodness of the reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Pisidia and entered the synagogue, he stood up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow Israelites and you others who are God-fearing, listen, the God of this people Israel chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out of it. Then he removed Saul and raised up David as king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten, unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac. Isaac, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah became the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez became the father of Hezron. Hezron, the father of Ram. Ram, the father of Aminadab. Aminadab became the father of Nashon. Nashon, the father of Salmon. Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz became the father of Obed, 
whose mother was Ruth. Obed became the father of Jesse, Jesse the father of David the king. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon became the father of Rehoboam, Rehoboam the father of Abijah, Abijah the father of Asaph. Asaph became the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat the father of Joram, Joram the father of Uziah, Uziah became the father of Jotham, Jotham the father of Ahaz, Ahaz be the father of Hezekiah, Hezekiah became the father of Manasseh, Manasseh the father of Amos, Amos the father of Josiah, Josiah became the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the Babylonian exile. After the Babylonian exile, Jeconiah became the father of Sheathiel, Sheathiel the father of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel the father of Abiud, Abiud became the father of Eliakim, Eliakim the father of Azor, Azor the father of Zadok, Zadok became the father of Akim. Akim, the father of Eliud. Eliud, the father of Eleazar. Eleazar became the father of Nathan. Nathan, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born, she says, who is called a Christ. Thus, the total number of generations from Abraham to David is 14 generations. From David to the Babylonian exile, 14 generations. From the Babylonian exile to the Christ, 14 generations. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that his, this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus the Gospel of the Lord. The Lord My dear ones, this evening we are here to thank God for bringing us our gift, the big gift of the world. That is the gift of Jesus Christ. The nativity. Christ taking our native nature. Taking our native nature. Taking, you know, becoming one of us. And if we listen well to all this long, you know, genealogy of Christ, you see that indeed God had a plan and he still has a plan for the world. All the prophets 
has spoken about him. All the major and the minor prophets have prophesied about this one particular person. That is our Lord Jesus Christ. And today, it has been fulfilled. The first reading talks about the people of Israel coming back from exile. Babylonian exile. And if you should realize, it says that the total number of generations from Abraham to David is 14 years. From David to the Babylonian exile, 14 years. The Babylonian exile was reported in Isaiah, what we just read. Because when the people came back, they thought that they had, you know, missed all the institutions that he had. And God advised them to come together once again in order that he himself will bring them like a, like a woman, you know, going to look for the first time for her husband. So God is going to marry the people of Israel after they had come back as reported by this gospel. And after all said and done, Christ, you know, as he was coming, started from Abraham. The genealogy started from Abraham to his real father, Jacob, and Joseph. Jacob and Joseph. Because, he says, Jacob is the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. So you see that Christ came through human being. He did not come out of the blue. He came through human being. And the scripture uh, mentions few people, Rahab, Ruth, and either one, you know, Bathsheba, that is the wife of Uriah. These people, you know, did not have good reputation. But we will ask the reason why Christ should come from such a line. Why that? That is very important. Christ coming as a human being, God, we are told that though he was in the form of God, he had no sin, yet he came through a sinful line, a sinful lineage to become a man. That is very evident that God's grace is still with us. God's grace is still with us. He is merciful. He knows that Christ is not coming to live with angels. He is coming to live with human beings, sinners. So we say that the Christmas that we celebrate in is about charity and compassion. Charity and compassion. Charity in the sense that God gave his only begotten son to us, to the world, so that we can also imitate him. When Christ came, he was talking about compassion all the time. If you don't have compassion on others, my father will not have compassion on you. Yes, he came to alleviate the sins of humankind. That's why we are celebrating him. That's why this evening we've gathered to get this in order that we can also say that indeed, if even I am a sinner, I have someone who can speak for me. If even I'm a sinner, I have someone who has come to visit me. I have someone 
who can go along with me? Because he himself came from a line of sinful people. Look at David. And it has been mentioned specifically. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Yet, Christ came out of this line. Because Joseph and David are from the same line. They are from the same line. Mary from the same line as well. So, what Mary did was to give birth to the world, and Joseph became the father. Became the father. That's why Christ was incorporated into the line of David. Into the line of David. From last week and other weeks, we've been reading that a shoot was proud from the line of David. And that is it. So my dear ones, it say that Christ would really understand us as sinners. And he has come to alleviate our sins. He has come to forgive our sins. He has come as a gift to the world. It is now our responsibility also to share this gift and also to alleviate the sins of others, alleviate the sufferings of others as Christ is with us. That is the meaning of Christmas, having Christ as a charitable person and as a compassionate person as well. So we celebrate the Christmas with charity, we celebrate the Christmas with compassion, we celebrate the Christmas with tolerance and all that. Otherwise, we wouldn't feel Christ in our heart. Otherwise, we wouldn't feel him. We wouldn't experience him. For the past months, we've been preparing ourselves to receive him. Now he's here. Are you ready? Are you really ready to receive him? Open your hearts to him so that you can create a room for him in your heart and your mind to come and occupy. And you see that the Christmas, you will be the happiest person. The Christmas will go on well with you and with everybody. This is what we're praying for. So may the Lord himself, who has given us this gift, conclude it perfectly for us. May he help us to experience Christ who has come to visit us. Help us to appreciate the gift that he has given us so that all of us will have peace and joy during this Christmas. May God bless us all. Amen. Shall we now rise and profess our faith? We are taking the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son of God, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father of God the Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, 
With Christ light shining on us this day, let us pray to God for the needs of our world, our church, our families, as together we respond. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. For Pope Francis and the church, he shepherds, that we may be a light in a darkened world to the hearts of all. We pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. For our leaders, world, national, and local, that Christ, the light of the world, may turn their minds and hearts to, th to thoughts of peace and healing for all. We pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, Lord hear Lord, us, we, we pray. pray. For our country, that the Prince of Peace may tear down the walls that divide us and bring us together as one nation under God. We pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear us, we pray. pray. For those living in fear during these uncertain times, and for those who must celebrate the birth of Christ alone because of this pandemic, that they may know they are not forgotten and the good news of the Christmas season is also theirs. We pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, hear us, pray. we pray. For all those who are lonely, sick, emotionally exhausted, especially the sick listed in our bulletin and parish book of intercessions, that Christ who shares our humanity may renew their strength and rekindle their hope. We pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. For all our loved ones who have died, especially for Eva Marie Arameda, whom we particularly remember at this Christmas Mass, and for the dead that the light of Christ may shine upon them and console their families who are grieving with their loss. We pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. With joyful praise and grateful hearts, we add our own prayers and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Gracious Lord, hear us, we pray. Together we pray the prayer of St. Joseph. Hail, Garden of the Redeemer, Spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you God entrusted his only Son. In you, Mary pleased her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Uh, 
Lord has said the sacrifice at your hand for the peace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his own children. As we look forward, O oh Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly, for knowing that in them you make manifest the beginnings of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the world made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are clear. Holy, 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 holy our God of things, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, a fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given out for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your chest spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, his spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
us to forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not ready to shake and remind me. I can only say the way that my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may draw new vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your heart with the light of virtue. Amen. May God, who will that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angels. Fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you hearers of his gospel. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make you sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you now and forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, the Master ascended. Merry Christmas.